Yeah. Journeyman Jimmy Black. We we'll see it locked. That's how we do it. Hey, Nouveau Africa. Yeah, let them know. Uh. Hey, Keep your head bobbing. Keep your head bobbing. Nouveau Africa. Hey, yeah, yeah, Everybody. Yeah, yeah. Everybody throw your hands in the air. Nouveau Africa. Throw your hands in the air. Throw your hands in the air. This is a story about Liberia, a country in transition, and the tremendous efforts of Africa's and Liberia's first democratically elected female president, Ellen Johnson Sirleaf to propel her tiny post-conflict nation into a middle-income country by the year 2030 and to lift all Liberians towards a better future. The first slice of President Sirleaf's vision, the Agenda for Transformation, identified the priority areas of energy, roads, ports, infrastructure development, youth empowerment and capacity building to put the country on a sustained development path. This was the path on which the entire nation was headed until disaster struck in early 2014 in the form of a foreign and deadly disease known as Ebola. The Ebola virus disease set the country reeling with thousands of Liberians dead or infected, the nation and its people stigmatized and shunned and the economy paralyzed. Ebola threatened to unravel the hard-fought gains the country had made since 2006 when Madam Ellen Johnson Sirleaf became president. This documentary looks at the impact of Ebola on Liberia and how far the country had progressed prior to the outbreak of a disease for which there is still no vaccine or cure. At the start of 2014, President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf was in the midst of her second and final term of office as the nation was turning the corner in terms of its development agenda, Liberia and its people were confronted with a global health crisis, Ebola. On March 17, 2014, two cases of Ebola were confirmed in Foya Lufa County. The virus had entered Liberia from neighboring Guinea. By April 28, there were no reported cases. However, a month later, on May 25th, another outbreak of Ebola was reported, again in Foya. This time, the virus came from Sierra Leone and soon became a national health crisis, the likes of which this country had never witnessed. Between 2006 and early 2014, small gains had been made in rebuilding the health sector, but not enough to prepare the nation to deal with Ebola that quickly overran an already understaffed and under-resourced healthcare system. By July, the epidemic had reached a heightened state, becoming the worst crisis Liberia has faced since its 14-year civil war. The few Ebola treatment centers that had been built following the outbreak could not handle the number of new cases as the disease spread across Liberia. Healthcare workers who were on the front line of this national crisis were seriously impacted. 
hospitals and clinics not equipped to deal with the epidemic began to shut down as healthcare workers became infected with Ebola. Many lost their lives in the battle against this dreaded disease. To the healthcare workers of Liberia, some of whom made the ultimate sacrifice, the country owes a debt of gratitude. As the disease spread, President Sirleaf declared a national state of emergency on August 6, 2014, describing Ebola as posing serious risk to the health, safety, security, and welfare of the nation. The government shut down many operations and sent its non-essential employees home to prevent further spread of the deadly virus. Schools were ordered closed, electrification, roads, and other development projects were suspended. Many of the major concessions engaged in iron ore mining, oil palm production, agriculture, and forestry severely curtailed their operations. Investments slowed as contractors and expatriates fled for their safety. Ebola brought the Liberian economy to a standstill. Overall, employment was drastically impacted as 50% of those holding jobs before the crisis became unemployed. At the same time, the cost of commodities, especially food, soared due to restrictions imposed in the shipping industry and the reluctance of ships to dock in Liberia's ports. This situation was made worse when many airlines canceled flights into Liberia and other Ebola-infected West African countries, fearing the spread of the disease. By September 2014, as the death toll rose with no end in sight, President Sirleaf addressed a letter to U.S. President Barack Obama. She appealed for urgent aid in tackling the worst recorded outbreak of the deadly Ebola virus, saying that without help, Liberia would lose the battle against the disease. She also appealed to President Obama for the U.S. to build and operate at least one Ebola treatment unit in the capital Monrovia, noting that U.S. civilian and military teams had experience in dealing with biological hazards. Shortly thereafter, U.S. troops led by General Darren Walker began arriving in Liberia to provide assistance in constructing additional Ebola treatment centers, labs, and a field hospital specifically for healthcare workers. In another open letter to the world, President Sirleaf stated that the whole world had a stake in the fight against Ebola, which, and I quote, respects no borders, unquote. She therefore pleaded for a commitment from every nation with the capacity to help, whether with emergency funding, medical supplies, or clinical expertise. The international community responded by increasing its efforts to combat the disease and sent millions of dollars in resources and aid into the region. Foreign doctors and other medical personnel from around the world, including China, Cuba, Uganda, poured into the country to kick the deadly Ebola out of Liberia. Still, Liberians were dying at alarming rates. By October 2014, the number of cases was reported as high as 4,262 
with over 2,484 dead. For a nation with a population of 4.3 million, the death rate was staggering. By November, with help from the international community, Liberia began to see a decrease in the number of Ebola-related cases and deaths, and more counties reporting no new cases. As of January 3rd, 2015, the total number of Ebola cases in Liberia was reported at 8,162 with 3,496 deaths. Ebola exposed major weaknesses in Liberia's healthcare system, but it also helped Liberia and West Africa raise the consciousness of the world for assistance in building a more improved, robust, and reliable healthcare system. The success achieved in reducing the number of new Ebola cases must be attributed to the many healthcare workers. Credit must also go to the leadership and determination demonstrated by President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf who took command of the crisis and used her international stature in appealing to the world to join in the battle against the deadly Ebola disease. Ebola was running after us, it was chasing us. Today we are chasing Ebola. Yeah, journeyman Jimmy Black, we we'll see it lock. That's how we do it. Hey, Nouveau Africa. Yeah, let them know. Uh. Hey, Keep your head bobbing. Keep your head bobbing. Nouveau Africa. Hey, yeah, yeah, Everybody. Yeah, yeah. Everybody, throw your hands in the air. Nouveau Africa. Throw your hands in the air. Throw your hands in the air. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, Nouveau yeah. Africa. All right, let them know. Seek, seek, and you will find just what you're looking for. Can you take it? It's got the number. But it seems like you don't mind. Why are you blaming? Why you blame the system if you don't care? Yeah, uh, yeah. If it's good for you, let it be for me and my friends. Uh, 